On Monday, June 12, 2023, Nigeria's President Bala Ahmed Tidibu signed the student loan bill uh, into law to enhance higher education for indigenous students in Nigeria. The announcement made by an aide to the President, Dele Alake, to State House correspondence has been met with great interest and questions. With this change to the law, the bill is now an act. The law is aimed at addressing financial constraints that hinder many students from gaining higher education and will provide interest-free loans to those in actual need. The law will have an impact on Nigeria's education system as well as the student population across the country. Understanding this development and the future of students in the basis for our conversation tonight on the program. I am your carrier. Clinton, and this is Nigeria Today. Welcome. <music> Joining us here in the studio is Dr. Philip John Hayab, uh, an educationist, and uh, Dr. Uh, Philip Hayab is also, he has, uh, is a, he has been a teacher for 18 years, and he's also a teacher trainer. Welcome to Nigeria today. Thank you for having me. Good evening, Nigerians. And uh, joining us via Zoom is Executive Director, Initiative for Grassroots Advancement in Nigeria, Ingra, Lokoja, Kogi State, Hamza Aliyu. Good to have you with us. Thank you for having me. So I will start with you, Hamza. I know you're privy to, these, uh, uh, to the Act, the Student Loan Act. What is your view of these uh, acts that have just been signed by the president? Well, uh, thank you uh, for that question. Uh, I think the issue around uh, uh, the student's loan uh, uh, conversation has been on for some time uh, in terms of uh, access to education. Um, and so it's, it's, it's something that gladdens our heart, especially we in the civil society to see that uh, the government is being proactive in terms of uh, putting its money where uh, its mouth is um, by finally. Okay, it's like we lost him there. Uh, no, Dr. Philip, just take up from where, uh, yeah. how do you view this uh, uh, act? Yes, thank you. Um, yes, um, with all fairness to government and to Nigerians, the introduction of the student's loan, uh, it passing it into law to take effect September this year, it's a welcome development um, for many students who, or maybe prospective tertiary education students who are out there who are not sure of how to pay their money uh, to pay for registration. Considering that the universities or some of the tertiary institutions are actually hiking the fees um, <clears throat> in the wake of the, the rise in fuel and uh, other cost of running institutions, uh, I would say that the, the bringing in of the, this bill is a welcome development and it poses that uh, it will give hope to some people who ordinarily would not have been able to make it to the higher institution. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Hamza, you were saying something. Welcome back. Uh, you were saying something, so uh, just pick it up from where you start. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. You had a little bit of a glitch. Um, and so, like I was saying, I said that um, it's a welcome development, like uh, uh, my colleague in the studio said. It's something that uh, we in the civil society have already talked about in terms of getting access to tertiary education for the less privileged. And we know that the... Uh, the, 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 our laws guarantees free and fair, uh, free education across all platforms, across all gender and sexes. And so it, it's it's very important that the government is finally putting its mouth where its money is, or putting its money where its mouth is, by, by fulfilling the campaign promises made to Nigerians to say that, yes, we are going to get um, a platform on which we're going to provide equal opportunities for all cadre of Nigerians, the citizens. Uh, irrespective of your demography, irrespective of the social the social uh, uh, class, that you should have access to tertiary uh, education, which is very important for our national development. And so for us, it's, it's an exciting thing. We want to see how it's going to work, despite the fact that we know there's going to be a lot of challenges, but we're expecting that um, with all hands on deck, we should be able to push this forward. Now, 
um, uh, still on you, Hamza. How relevant is this bill to the education system in Nigeria? Well, um, yes, education is on the concurrent list, and so it shows, it means clearly that all the tiers of government are going to be involved in it. But tertiary education, for instance, is, is, is more in the purview of the federal government. And so a lot of, um, like for lack of a better phrase, but the body language of the federal government is going to rub off well on other um, uh, tiers of government in terms of how they take tertiary education or how seriously they take it. And so we're looking forward to seeing this particular uh, platform, this particular law, help in propagating the idea that for national development, all Nigerians need equal access to tertiary education. And that is the skills and capacities that we're looking forward to going forward. Like I said, it's going to be a challenge. Nobody is going to think there's going to be a Tea Party. No, it's going to be a very serious challenge how it's being implemented, how we're going to cope with it. But the most important thing is that we must first start with this first step, providing that platform from, on which people are able to access tertiary education. And then we we'll summon those challenges as we move forward. But it's an exciting time. It's an exciting point in Nigerian um, education history. And it's something that we should all be glad that has come to have seen the day of, uh, have seen the light of day. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Philip, I know before we, the program started, we were discussing about um, uh, the student loan. You rightly mentioned that this is not the first time we're having something like this. Yes. Now, uh, how can uh, the Nigerian students really benefit from this? And how can this be sustained? Yes, yeah, so thank you for that question. Sustainability, I think, has been one of Nigeria's major problems from what I've studied. Uh, this morning when I woke up, uh, I think one of the first posts that popped up on my phone was an advertisement or maybe somebody brought out a publication or a public notary of the former, that is the defunct Students Loan Board, which uh, advertised the names of certain individuals in March 31st, I think on March 31st, 1980. Now, these persons are accused to have actually submitted false information of themselves, false guarantors, and this is, I mean, corruption is one issue in this country. And uh, it's not just at the level of the government. I, uh, an average Nigerian will want to cut corners, even the traffic. These are evidences that we are not interested in following due processes. Now, so until we are able to nip this issue of allowing people to cut corners, then we might have a very good policy that might not see the light of day. So yes, I'm optimistic, like um, uh, Hamza has said over there, um, I'm optimistic, but the truth is that this is going to come with lots of challenges. Who are the persons who are going to manage this board? How are they going to screen these candidates? And another thing is we have millions of people enrolling in tertiary education in Nigeria. So how much is the government willing to make available and for these teaming students that would come and want to access these uh, funds and uh, across the nation? And indeed, yes, while we might have children who, whose parents are civil servants who work and earn salary, we do have children of many farmers, poor farmers for that matter, who are in typical rural areas who might be the best beneficiaries, if you say maybe credible beneficiaries of these loans. But would, they, would there be a fair play? Would there be transparent administration to allow these persons to be the ones to come and get these funds until we are committed genuinely to the project. The project might just be um, celebrated uh, and then God forbid that we will not see it succeed. But I do hope that uh, with the kind of banking systems that we have today, where you have the BVN that you can trust someone, uh, the chances are that we might not have the repeat at least in that magnitude of what happened in the 80s. It's actually very appalling. When I read it today, I saw some of the beneficiaries listed against their name was that they studied law. So if a lawyer is going to get into an institution, taking a loan and defaulting, even giving false um, guarantorship, uh, guarantors, false identity, false places, 
then it's already uh, an issue of concern. And one point is that the names that you would find on that first page are actually from Nigeria's premier universities, University of Ibadan, University of Lagos, and University of Insuka. That is on the first page. I'm nearly sure if we have the all the other pages, we'll have Amadubelo University and other universities. Mm. So it's actually something that cut across Nigeria and the beneficiaries who gave the false information, they are not from one section of Nigeria, they are from everywhere. So yeah, there is already a problem and it's good that it's coming at the, just at the point where we're bringing this bill into talking about this bill so that the administrators that have been uh, that are going to run these uh, funds would actually uh, understand from the beginning the kind of challenges and the persons they will deal with as, as the time go, go, go by. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, let's pause for a break and hear a cross-session of Nigerians on the subject matter. I was put together by our correspondent, Mila Butua. Excellent, very fantastic policy. We have been waiting for such policies in Nigeria. Uh, in, in other countries that are developed in terms of educational growth, they have done that for a very long time. Even in USA, UK, France, they are doing the same thing. So why don't we do the same thing in Nigeria? Since we cannot provide enough scholarship to cater for all, our students will go to school, get their qualifications, and then at the end of the day, when they get jobs, they can settle the loans. It's a very fantastic idea, and I praise the president for signing that bill into law. How do they intend to implement? Who will be in charge? How do they intend to organize it? And how do they intend to get the payback after the student must have graduated? Will he get or she get a job before they start paying back? How will they monitor? Okay, I think it's a good idea, but my problem is, what are the criteria to get? It's like, what's, what do we do to get, what qualifies you to get the loan? Yeah, I think it's a very good idea. I feel that it's a very good idea. At least students that don't have anything in hand, that are don't have anything in hand, it can help them and also motivate them to. I feel it will help a lot of students, like those who are not like well-to-do, who do not come from a well-to-do. Um, family or background so, so with this loan now they, it can like help them to like further their education but also I feel there's also a disadvantage because some of these students when they finish taking these loans and they uh, and they are done with school how we like where would they get the money to pay back this loan because on and because of the whole um, unemployment lack of jobs so how would they get the money like how would they get jobs to to get the money to pay back the loan so i feel there's an advantage and there, there are also disadvantages welcome back it is still nigeria today and my guests are still with me uh, hamza you had the reaction of people there. They talked about implementation, how they are going to pay back, the effectiveness of this act. So what uh, is your take on all of these issues? Uh, well, um, it, it's, it's, it's interesting to hear the, 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 the mindset of Nigerians concerning this bill. You could see it from, a, from your cross-section of your, your respondents. Everybody agrees that it's, it's, it's something that we should welcome. But of course, um, like the law says, um, there are a lot of criteria. A lot of us don't know what the criteria are. So everybody is beginning, beginning to ask questions. But if you go through the law itself, you see uh, criteria have been, have been uh, itemized for those who should, who are qualified to get these, uh, these loans. Um, it talks about um, how much the family must, be, must, must end in a particular year for you to qualify. It talks about your credit um, history. So a, a lot of people don't understand what credit history is. Now it's, it's going to come down to how have you been loyal in terms of paying back um, uh, loans you have taken from other uh, uh, financial institutions. It talks about whether you you are owing before. If you're owing something to the federal government before, this time around you may not be qualified to get it. There's a lot of other um, uh, items, that, things that have, criteria that have been set out in the law. But most importantly, one of your respondents talked about those who governments have uh, invested money in must now be able to work to pay back government for it. So if you take government loan to go to school, you can't just finish school and then you leave government and then you leave Nigeria and then you think that 
uh, nobody will hold you accountable for those loans. No, you must work to pay back those loans. Again, it's going to uh, how is we are going to manage how we're going to work towards achieving this is going to be something that we look forward to. Something we're going we're excited to see how it's going to work. We know how it works in other um, climes outside Nigeria and, and the results they are getting. So it's something that as long as we're interested and say that this is the way forward, we should be prepared to face. The, the challenges we're going to meet. And I, I'm happy that a cross-section of Nigeria, like you said, are, are already interested in it. They're already excited about it. So it's something that we are going to see how it works out. OK, uh, the, the, Philip, so yeah. what is your own reaction? Some uh, persons talked about uh, the, the effectiveness of this, uh, yes. of this uh, loan. You know, and you also, you've mentioned some other, uh, like, like he rightly mentioned, is that the act stipulates that the student's income or family's income must uh, be less than 500,000 naira per annum to be qualified for the loan. Yeah, so, so by implication, it will mean that the children, for, for, children of, uh, for children who are only prospective students in this case, who have parents who work, let's say, with the government, either at the state or the local mm -hmm. government or federal, mm -hmm. if their parents are up to level eight, the chances would be that they would have much more than this amount of money so may, maybe so as we're looking at those who should guarantee a candidate or a prospective student should be level 12 mm -hmm. we should also be looking at people who should benefit should be less than level 12 and that will include my children too not being able to get it which is fine um, so I do believe that until we put very stringent mechanisms and follow them to the letter we will not be able to achieve the dream. Like uh, one of the uh, respondents, uh, the elderly person, he was talking about job creation. So the government, as it is introducing this student's loan, one of the things which made the student loan to work in the past was the assurance that people who graduated from the universities got employment automatically, in most cases, as far as I knew as I was a child, everyone who finished the university and went for NYC at that time, they sometimes even come back with a Volkswagen. Oh. Yes. So nowadays <laughs> we'll finish school for some years. Uh, some of us haven't bought a bicycle. So, so it means that we haven't really been able to sustain what we started. But now that we welcome this uh, reintroduction of this uh, student's loan, which is what has become defunct, if we learn from the mistake of the past, the mistakes, I'm sure, of the past, then we will use it to mitigate and ensure that these loans actually are taken. One uh, thing that I'm happy uh, with is that you are going to, uh, the candidates will acquire these loans through the institutions where they study. Now, this is the practice. In the few the universities that I attended, students' loans were given and even scholarships. When we, I was leaving the university in 2016, I actually suggested to the Tertiary Education Trust Fund not to pay the funds to this candidate's account. Like if I'm a Nigerian studying in the UK, then you pay the money that I'm uh, qualified to get through the uh, Tertiary Education Trust Fund to my account. There were cases of Nigerians who took such monies and never went to the universities that they were asked to go. Mm -hmm. Now, if you pay it to the coffers of the universities that they are going to attend, mm -hmm. the university deducts whatever is their school fees, whatever is left, the university has a means of remitting this money to the accounts of the students, which will keep check that the money is, is used for the purpose for which it is voted for. Then the issue of accountability, how you are able to, to get them to repay once they have jobs, for instance, they would be able to repay because with the BBN, the same account that you get now, even if you open 10 more accounts, so long as we follow and we keep to track the BBN, the, we can always track the person to the account. And then people, the issue of guarantorship now. Now this is where the whole issue, are we going to give them the forms to go and get people out there to sign without any commitment? Or these guarantors now also provide their BVNs so that we can also trace them. So it's going to be very cumbersome, but then it's worth doing. Because once we don't get it right at the beginning, then we, are come, we might be having another program that is going to become a, uh, a failure. 
and God forbid that that happens. So we need to sit up and make it work. Now, uh, Hamza, um, I know earlier Dr. Philip talked about uh, the loan being in existence, something similar being in existence before, and uh, people came up with uh, 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 false information. So how do we ensure that these uh, acts or uh, these, uh, the loans, uh, you know, the process is not being hijacked by the wherewithal? Because now we say it's for indigent students, but um, we've seen situations where, you know, certain situations like this have been hijacked by people that are well-to-do and it's no longer accessible to, you know, the indigent students. How do we ensure that this doesn't happen in this case? Um, well, th that I'm sure the, the, the framers of the law took into consideration that particular, these particular issues you raised and, um, and embedded in, this, in the law itself are... Uh, uh, fail proof measures. The doctor talked in the studio about guarantors. You must provide guarantors, and those guarantors must be civil servants. And so the government has a way of um, tracking who those guarantors are, and they find a way to ensure that it is who they say they are. Secondly, um, the issue around, of course, the criteria we've mentioned means that it's not everybody that's qualified. And since it's not everybody that's qualified, it reduces the number of persons who you are going to deal with at the end of the day. Thirdly, the, the law itself provides uh, a duration time for which, at the point of application, at the time of which there must be a, a rejection or an acceptance of the application, it gives a particular time, a time frame. So that makes it very easy for you to track it. But most importantly, what will end up making this law work is going to be the political will of the government who wants it in place. How do they set up the mechanisms to ensure that it is those persons who should get it that get it. Secondly, that we get payback. Because if you don't pay back these loans, Nigeria is not a Father Christmas. No economy is a Father Christmas. We must be able to ensure that we get back these loans. And one of the things that the law says is that if you fail to pay back this, these monies, apart from just your guarantors paying back the money, your family loses the opportunity to apply. Anybody in your family will lose the opportunity to apply again. And so it makes it uh, a little bit stiffer for those persons who see it as a, as a largesse from government to take government money, take government loans, and do whatever you want to do with it, and there is no repercussion for it. So I think, yes, we may have challenges initially in the implementation, but I think going forward, if we if we are dedicated to it, if we, are, we stick to it, and we, 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 we solve those challenges as we move, around, we move on, we are going to get there eventually. It's, it's, a, work, it's a work in progress. It's not, it's not, it cannot be, even in, in advanced climes, you still have challenges with the um, issues around student loan uh, programs. Philip, what would be your advice to, uh, well, will I say the government and those are, you know, put in charge of this, um, of this uh, uh, loan, the student loan? Yes, as part of the renewed hope or mantra of the new government, let this program for the indigent student be meant to be for indigent students. And uh, then here, our universities need to be fast. Sometimes the admissions come late and so you have maybe just one week to register. Now anybody you give admission has who has only one or two weeks to register cannot apply for this loan, cannot access this loan and talk about enrolling using this loan. I lost the opportunity of going to the UK in 2008-9 because the funds that I was given to me came three weeks later after the university in the UK had actually started. So if we are going to start off a session in October, the list should be available, let's say, by June, then the person applies in 30 days. We also have to talk about duration. I've had challenges with even international organizations in Nigeria will interview you for a job and they'll go silent without telling you anything, which is different in other climes. In the UK, if you're processing a master's admission in 30 days you will get a response either successful or unsuccessful if we keep to time and follow due process these people who are supposed to get this funding will get the fundings go to the university and then that will increase the capacity development for nigerians and that actually will ensure hope for the future Thank you very much. Uh, and that's it on Nigeria today. We want to thank our guests for sharing their thoughts with us. Uh, we want to thank uh, Dr. Philip John Hayab, an educationist. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for coming.
And uh, Hamza Aliyu, the Executive Director Initiative for Grassroots Advancement in Nigeria, uh, Lokoja Kogi State. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. And to you, our viewer, thank you so much for being a part of this. Remember, the program Nigeria today is weekday at 7.30 p.m. on NTA News 24. You can watch this and other episodes and on www.youtube.com slash NTA News 24. Hub. I am Ikeria Clinton saying bye for now.